this tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hi folks, I'm not exactly a fan of Christmas or other celebration days, whatever, because I like the routine of normal days. Anyway, having said this, uh, I recently came across this lighting in the German city of Aachen, which is in the very west of Germany, a very nice old town, and we have this Christmas illumination. And I wondered how you can create such a sphere with with lots of lights, LED lights, I guess. Um, the approaches are quite uh, open. You can use Bifrost Graph, I guess. I haven't really managed to do it because the import of lights into the Bifrost editor is not trivial. You can try Mesh uh, with an instance uh, which is not workable for me, at least. I didn't give it a long try, but uh, I failed in the first beginning. But the most interactive way uh, I can introduce is this one. We want to distribute lights on basically a sphere. That's why we create a sphere, but we create the lights first. So let's go to curves, uh, actually to polygon modeling and create a cube because it's a very simple geometry. And we turn this into a light by going Arnold lights and a mesh light. Uh, the reason why we do this is because the point light, for example, is not really visible. Whereas here we can click on light visible. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We make the light visible and we raise the intensity and exposure quite a bit. And uh, that's basically all there is. Now, um, the cubes can be a little bit smaller, I guess. And uh, I because they are the tiny light sources. And uh, if you want to distribute 100, uh, this takes a little bit longer, <laughs> I guess. But uh, we'll distribute about, I think, 20 or 40 or something like that. Now, um, we need several lights, and uh, this is one of them. Let's move it f forward and uh, duplicate it. And the duplicate looks like this. You don't see the duplicate because it does not really duplicate that light, although it looks like as if it was duplicated. We need to duplicate the hierarchy. That means both of these objects. We select the group, which is the polygon cube with the light in the hierarchy lower down. And now we go to edit and we duplicate special. And in the duplicate special window, we can under the, the these are the uh, default settings we need to duplicate the input graph and the input graph in our case is this this is the input of the cube it's the light and uh, we want uh, well 40 and we apply this and reset the settings so we have a clean start next time we use this command now they all sit on top of each other and they are here 41 all in all now let's create the sphere and uh, I can create uh, this sphere obviously but uh, just to show you that both worlds can be mixed uh, I create a NURBS sphere and I scale it up quite a bit. When you select that cube for example, the first one, actually this is the first one, um, and press the key W and you want to um, put it on that sphere, it does not work. It's sitting somewhere in the sphere now and uh, this is not what we want. And there's a there are ways to use snapping here. For example, curve snapping does not work, but uh, the V snapping, pressing V, does work. So it sits here on one of the isopalms of that NURBS surface. But we actually can have a much simpler approach. And in order to do this, we need a special knowledge about Maya. And this is selecting this sphere and then clicking on this icon, which makes the selected object live, which means we don't accept anything on the grid anymore. We 
use the topology of that sphere and nothing else for whatever we do now. So we select the first one and we move it over here and it's planted on that sphere. Now we do the same with all the others. They're planted on that sphere. That's very beautiful. And uh, we just randomly place them somewhere. I pick one after the other and just place it there. And I don't have to care about where um, to place them. I just place them more or less randomly. That's the beauty of this. Actually, the, the photograph, uh, they are more or less randomly placed. Of course, in reality, they have their wires and we'll take care of the wires later, but um, we won't use them in the electrically precise way. So uh, let me speed this up. I'm planting 40 mesh lights on that surface. Now, when we render this using Arnold, we see lots of lights working there, which is just nice. But in reality, we don't have that sphere, so we can hide it. So why can't we hide it? Because it's still live. The magnet is still active. We deactivate the make life and uh, then we hide it by pressing H. So we have only the lights now and they are fine too. We need to make them smaller. That's the first thing I would suggest. So we want to scale them all down in the same way. How do we do this? Well, we select them all. And in the outliner, we see that we actually did select them all. And now we can scale them down like this. Let's see the rendering again. That's much nicer. We can scale them down even a little bit further like this. This is very nice. Now um, we want to make them yellow. How do we do this? All of them yellow, yellowish. Well, uh, if you do this on a one by one method, you would pick one light and then change that color. This would be a tedious process and that's what the so-called general editor attribute spreadsheet is good for. The attribute spreadsheet displays the selected objects, in this case only the light cube. So there's one really elegant way to select all the lights in the scene. When we show the attribute spreadsheet we see it's empty because we didn't select anything. But uh, when we go to select and all by type and we select all the lights. Now we can select them all. And here are the lights. Cube number one till light P cube number 41. But where is the color? And where is the intensity? Well, here's an Arnold tab. And the, under the Arnold tab, you see things which are interesting for rendering. And for example, you have a color here on the right side, color red, green and blue. And when we reduce the color blue, which is all set to one currently because it's white. White it means basically one, 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 one for red, one for green, one for black, for blue, sorry. And uh, we, s we just uh, click here, not in one of the fields and we type in zero. So we have no blue for all the lights. And when we render it now, we see the lights are yellow, which is just fine. And I think the intensity is good. But if you're not fine or happy with the intensity, you find it here too. AI exposure and raises from 0 0.8 to, well, 1.2. Now cables between the lights. We won't create cables between the lights. We just go an easy way and uh, we can fake this impression easily with this method. The fake the reality, so to say. We need a sphere. So let's hide all the lights, H, and unhide the sphere, H. So the sphere is back again. What we'll do now is we'll draw by hand 
several curves on that surface. In order to do this, we need to select it and make it live again. So we cannot select anything in the scene because the surface, this sphere, is live now. Now we can go to one of the drawing tools, and this is one of them, and this is the other one. Um, let's draw the first curve and press Enter. And now with the key G, which repeats the last command, you can continue like this. So I think I'm done. Now, how do we get these curves as curves? They're currently parts of that surface and not independent curves. So when we hide the sphere, the curves are invisible as well. So let's unhide them again. The key command is a command which I used in a 12-part NURBS modeling course quite intensively. Um, you find that course on Udemy and Skillshare and the links are in the description if you want to go into industrial design for example. This is important, NURBS modeling. And this is one of the key commands. It is uh, under curves and you need to be under modeling for this. Modeling, curves, and it's called duplicate surface curves. Currently it does not really work because we need to select those curves first and we do that by selecting. And I select all by type and I want to select all NURBS curves. So the curves are selected and the sphere is not selected. Now we go to curves and duplicate surface curves. In the outliner we now see that I did <laughs> draw on that surface 24 curves and they're independent of the surface now and uh, we can now delete the surface and we have our curves. Now when we render the scene, of course the lights are invisible because we made them invisible so we see nothing, we don't see curves. So let's first of all get our lights back by pressing H after having selected them all and here we have all our lights. You know how to get them smaller if you like to um, by going to the attribute spreadsheet and scaling them down. Shall we do this uh, together? Well, we can. Windows, General Editors and Attribute Spreadsheet. And here we have Keyable and we have the scale. And the scale is set to 5.2 in all dimensions. So I click here and reduce this to 0 0.3 and the same here, 0 0.3 and the same here, 0 0.3. So this is really nice, the attribute spreadsheet to, to change many things with just one click. So the lights are much smaller now. When we render them, they are in fact smaller. We could change the intensity and the color, of course, in, in the same attribute spreadsheet. Now we want to make the curves visible and there's a simple trick to do this. Actually, if you select one curve, you could go to Arnold and render that curve. You could do that, but uh, I would not advise you to do this because we select them all and now we invoke a command which is uh, the main topic in a uh, tutorial I did on this channel here. Uh, it's about Arnold Curve Collector. The link to the my tutorial about curve collection is in the description as well. So I selected all the curves and I put them into one group which is called the Curve Collector. It sits here. Now the curves are gone. No, they're not. They're in that curve collector node in the in that group. The sweet thing about the curve collector is that it actually makes all the curves renderable. So I don't have to care about rendering the curves now. And you see the curves sort of when we get closer we see them a little bit better over here but they're very thin. The wires are very thin. I just select the curve collector and up here is the width and we can change the width from 0 0.01 to 0 0.1. So they're 10 times thicker now and they look much thicker now. And uh, they are displayed as a ribbon. We can use thickness 
so they are more round now. Doesn't make a big difference when they're so thin anyway. Now we're done. This is what we need. And here is just to recap this, the inspiring image I took, the photograph I took in the city of Aachen, in the very center. And um, I think we did a very nice job replicating this in reality. If you need trees and landscapes, go ahead. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you.